You know, there comes a time when every YouTuber has to air out the dirty laundry. I think it's that time. Let's do it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, it's time to reveal one of my most shameful secrets. And that is, of course, every manga tuber's worst nightmare where you recommend books that you actually never finished. So yeah, this is a new series that I'm starting on this channel, holding myself accountable for all the books that I have that I have not had the honor of finishing. So today, I brought here with me three books. Dr. Stone, Beastars, and Doro Hedoro. They are fantastic series. And yeah, my shameful secret is that I never really finished all three. To defend myself, I do think that having read almost all of it, let's say 95 to 97% of a series, I am confident enough in recommending it to people. Needless to say, there will be spoilers, and I know a lot of people are going to be turned off. I know this video is not going to get a ton of views, but if if you decide to watch i do appreciate it so yeah proceed with caution i will be showing pages from the entirety of the book so spoilers i guess let's get started Alrighty, let's start with the first book here, Dr. Stone Volume 26, the final volume of the series. I think this is one of the best modern Shonen Jump books in my personal opinion. I know that's going to differ to a lot of people. Uh, some of you will disagree and that's okay. That's It's perfectly healthy to disagree on things. But I do have a very soft spot for uh, Dr. Stone. It means a lot. I've gone through so much over the past, what, uh, five, six years since it's uh, publication started back in uh, yeah 2017 and it just lifted me up when I needed it the most and one of the first uh, manga videos that I did on this channel uh, way back is actually Dr. Stone Volume 1. It's on the playlist if you want to check it out. Of course that's uh, Rookie Geo talking so uh, I, I want to believe I, I sound a little bit better nowadays. I thought it was okay. It could have been a little bit better, but what we got, I thought was in line with what Dr. Stone is all about, which is the advancement of humanity through science, the perseverance, facing the unknown with the tools that we have that make humanity special. And I thought the book celebrates humanity in a very positive way, while also bringing a lot of colorful, uh, larger than life personalities with these characters. The mystery of the petrification is probably the biggest, uh, well, I'm going to be redundant here, the biggest mystery of the book, the one I was anxiously awaiting for the finale to see how it would be solved. And we finally get an answer to that when all of the characters decide that they have to take the fight to Y-Man and they're going to uh, travel into space. So we do get that cool reveal that the Medusa devices in Y-Man are actually a un an unknown futuristic parasitic alien tech species that arrives. We don't really know how these beings came to be, which is pretty interesting. It gives a sort of a, a parallel nature to humanity and how we're always seeking uh, the origin of life, the origin of the universe, and all these unanswered questions that, depending on the various faiths and uh, scientific analysis and data and all that stuff, you're going to get a multitude of answers. I have mine, and I know you have yours as well, but it's interesting to see characters ponder on these questions. So the reveal, like I said, was fun. I did enjoy it. I thought it was going to be something else, but I'm glad it was the uh, alien route. The bargaining that happens between Senku and this parasitic alien species of Y-Man is interesting. The aliens think that this is the way to achieve immortality by being petrified. Of course, they don't experience emotions and life the same way we do as uh, humans, mammals, animals, uh, <laughs> biological creatures on Earth, uh, the emotion, the, the complex emotions of the human brain and all that stuff. So it's going to be totally a totally different perception. And when Senku makes a bargain for them to work together to achieve greater things, they do ponder on it, but decide to move on. But 
there's just enough curiosity, which reminds us as a parallel to humanity of one lowly Medusa device for Y-Man that decides to stay with the humans and see what they're capable of doing. And that leads me to believe that, yes, we are going to get more Dr. Stone in the future, which we have. The series ended last year, 2022. Fortunately, I had not spoiled myself for the uh, with the ending, so I was very happy about that. And now this year, we have the 4D Science spin-off series. I might be uh, pronouncing it wrong, but it is a th uh, short three-chapter spin-off sequel about Senku building a time machine, which is hinted at in the finale for Dr. Stone. So I am for sure confident that even if the spin-off ends and we don't see anything right away, I am confident that we will see uh, more of these characters in the future. The art is phenomenal. I love Boichi. He's one of my favorite uh, current modern mangaka. I love his style and the anatomy and all that. And, and it's so cool to see here the panels and just the scope of the final chapters here on the moon when we see the Y-Man and the Medusa devices. It was phenomenal. I really love that scene. So yeah, overall, I thought it was a fun finale. I really enjoyed the twist here or the big reveal. At first, when I was reading it, I genuinely thought it was going to be like an evil Senku from the future that came back and wanted to uh, challenge himself or something crazy like that. But as soon as I saw the parasitic alien origin, I'm like, OK, cool, I, I dig this. It gives it that feel of the unknown and it falls back in line with the series of reaching new heights. As soon as Senku awoke uh, from petrification and started to jump civilization back up, you knew that this was the next logical step to involve itself in like space stuff and uh, reaching beyond the stars. And there are hints of that here towards the end. Beastars Volume 22, the finale for Beastars. I was dreading it because I enjoy the world building so much for this series that I did not want to reach the finale. I wanted to keep Legoshi's adventures ongoing. I was thinking while I was reading it that the finale did seem a little bit stuffed. It had a lot of stuff going uh, towards it. You had the melon stuff and then it was jumping around with uh, dozens of different characters. We didn't really have, at least to me, a satisfying conclusion to Legoshi and Haru. Yes, they do get the spotlight in the final chapter, but I feel like this series could have continued exploring that interpersonal drama and audiences would still be there to read about it. I just wish we could have gotten more chapters because the world building and the premise of Beastars, having anthropomorphic animals as our way to understand things like prejudice and racism and love is very interesting and you can do so much with it. And I know 22 volumes, now that's a lot of story to write and draw, but I feel like having more chapters could have benefited the story more. The whole melon stuff is interesting. Him being the offspring of an interracial couple, it's a parallel to Legoshi himself, who is also the product of that. One was raised with love, the other with hatred, and a foggy vision of what reality could be. I was very shocked uh, to find out that essentially Melon is a hurt child who never really got that love from his parents and just went south, went bad. Whereas Legoshi is standing for justice and truth and reaffirming his values, which is always great to see. I love Legoshi is my favorite character in this series to see his journey from such a timid, shy wolf to the hero that ends up saving the day. Even if people don't recognize it towards the end, his actions throughout the book led to a lot of characters opening up and realizing more about themselves and becoming better as a result 
of Legoshi's actions and their interactions with him. The art is stunning, as always. Uh, Parui Tagaki, she is one of my favorite mangaka. I love the art on Beastars. It's so scratchy and uh, awkward looking at times, but well defined. I love the architecture and the style. It has that Euro comic sensibility mixed with manga tropes. I genuinely enjoyed reading this series and looking back at volume one, seeing how far she's progressed, this being her first major work is really awesome. I am so happy that we can get more through Beast Complex and we have three volumes of that. The series is currently on a hiatus, but Paru did mention that she would like to write more chapters from time to time for Beast Complex. So if you want more Legoshi and these wonderful characters, they do show up past a volume two. So Beast Complex two and three do take place after the finale of the main series, which is awesome. So here we are with Doro Hedoro, the book that I was dreading to cover the most. I have to be honest with everybody. I do get a little bit nervous when it comes to like big series like this, because I tend to suffer with stuff like imposter syndrome a lot when it comes to the internet and reviewing big books that everybody's read sort of puts uh, an imaginary weight on me and I think, oh, I'm not going to be able to cover this uh, as good as some of the famous uh, content creators. But then I realize, uh, no, you know, I, I'll cover it my way. And if people don't like it, well, what are you going to do? You can't please everybody, right? So volume 23 of Doro Hedoro, a series that is so chaotic. It has such volume and depth of characters. Uh, we could do a whole show talking about just Doro Hedoro and the insanity of its cast. The main complaint I have about this series is the length. I do remember as I was reading it, as I was reaching uh, the finale, I think around volume 19 and 20, I thought, this series is great. It's wacky. It's zany. I love the art. It is its biggest appeal. Uh, the characters are well written. There's enough chaos to perplex you and keep you going. But at the same time, I do feel that this is a unnecessarily long series. When things start reaching towards their conclusion, the author throws more wrenches into the plan and it extends the life of this series, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I feel like it kind of loses a little bit of steam while it's heading towards that finale. You have the ongoing search that Cayman is doing to get back Nikaido as she is now a demon turned demon and she's absorbed by this conglomerate that is formed of the manifestation of the deceased inhabitants of the whole. That is a mouthful. So this creature has absorbed almost everybody, all the key players, and it's up to Kaiman to defeat this huge, raggedy, giant monster demon creature, while we have the rest of the devils siding with him and Chidaruma betting against him and rooting for this monster which we call Whole or Holy. Nikaido's trapped inside along with the severed head of N and his crew and they're all trying to escape. But the main goal was for our main protagonist, Kaimon, to rescue Nikaido, to restore that friendship and for them to live happily ever after. There's moral ambiguity happening in this series. It's not a clear definition on good guys and bad guys. That's also one of the things that I like about this book. Even though characters like En, Shin, Noi, uh, Turkey, uh, Fujita, Ebisu, the list goes on. Even though they do shady things, you still care about them and want to see them survive and triumph in their own way. You know, before confusing myself further with this video, 
I thought it was just as good as the rest of the volumes. It has a very satisfying ending and conclusion. Everything that you wanted to happen does happen. And the art overall was just absolutely splendid. Uh, it's grungy. It's messy. It's beautifully done. Even when it's at its most hellish, you can't help but appreciate how nice everything looks. I might have to do a second read through to fully grasp the whole concepts and ideas. It's a very difficult plot to try and summarize, especially in a quick video like this. But I hope you don't get too mad at me. Uh, I'm trying my best here with this, but all three books I thought were great. They all had uh, their ups and downs as you read them, and I am happy to finally say that I concluded reading Dr. Stone, Beastars, and Doro Hedoro. And there we go. That is the end of the video. I'm going to call it volume one. So do expect a volume two at some point, because I have other series that I have recommended in the past that unfortunately I've not finished. So needless to say, I am reading those as we speak. So I will be putting out a video soon ish on the channel. If you want to see more content like this, uh, leave a like. It truly does mean a lot when people do that. Thank you for subscribing, following the channel and of course, commenting down down below. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I've got to go. Stay safe out there. God bless. I will catch all of you on our next video.